So you finally got yourself the Samsung One UI 6 official update with Android 14, or maybe you've just bought a brand new Samsung device and now you're wondering what's new, what's improved, and what can I do differently now? And in how many ways can this be better than Apple's iOS? Well, if you've asked yourself any of those questions, you're in the right place. So welcome, now join me, and together we can rule your galaxy. It is your destiny. That's me saying subscribe if any of these tips and tricks help you at all. Let's start with a brand new feature that not many people will know about and will probably miss entirely if they haven't seen this video because you won't find this powerful new app in the app drawer unless you do this. Swipe up to go to your app drawer and at the top, search for studio. And the first time you launch this app, you'll be given the option to add this to the home screen. I do recommend you do this straight away. Now, once you've done this, you will find the Studio app in your app drawer and you can now add it to one of your home screens. The Samsung Studio Editor app is amazing for video content. You can create projects that you can save and return to at any time and carry on where you left off. You can layer video content and photos, add captions and audio and effects. So if you want to get good at making your content look good without having to purchase a third party video editing software, you're gonna love Samsung Studio. Now you might have seen that one before, but stick around because there's some features in this video that I don't think you would have seen before. So here are some thoughtful user upgrades to how you use the camera app. And let's start with the new camera widget. So if you hold your finger down on an empty part of the screen, go to widgets here at the bottom, scroll down till you see the camera widgets, and you'll see this, custom camera. Now you can add this to your home screen any way you like. With this, you can create a large auto launch button on your home screen and set it to launch a specific camera mode. Give it a name, select the mode that you want this to launch, and you can create a custom folder for photos taken using this widget. And you can also have a custom background for the widget itself. And when you do snap photos using this widget that you've created, you'll notice there's a new icon at the bottom left corner of the screen. This is showing you the folder in which those photos will be saved. So there's been some subtle but valuable UI upgrades to the stock camera app that you need to know about. So check this out. The tools along the top of the screen have been updated so that now you can easily switch between the megapixel count on your primary sensor. This is the Galaxy S23 Ultra. So I have 12 megapixels, 50 megapixels, and 200. There's also this new icon that looks kind of like the YouTube logo. This gives you quick access to motion photos. And if you're not familiar with motion photos, this feature is ideal for taking pictures of moving subjects. It will capture a series of frames so that you can pick the best shot after the fact. There's also an icon up here for quick access to camera filters. Many are already pre-installed, but if you want to, you can go in and download tons more by hitting the plus in the bottom left corner. And now there's some quick tools for editing photos so you can swipe up and straight away you'll notice you have quick access to remaster and object eraser. But if you hit the pen at the bottom, you'll have all your edit tools available here. And one of the great things about this is once you've done your edit and you hit save, you now always have the option to revert back to the original at any time Despite how many changes you've made to the photo, you just hit the three dots in the top right corner and you'll have revert to original. Something else that's really cool that Samsung have added is the ability to copy the edits that you've made to this photo so that you can paste it onto other photos that might be similar that you want to apply that same look to just by hitting the three dots and pasting the edits. Okay, here's another hidden change that will help you capture Better low light video footage. Open your camera app, go to video, hit the settings in the top left corner, go to auto FPS. Here you'll find a little upgrade to auto FPS. Yes, auto FPS was available before, but now it's been improved. With this enabled, your Samsung Galaxy can slow down the digital shutter speed to let in more light. Yes, it does work for 30 frames per second. However, I would recommend having it set to both 30 and 60 because this will noticeably help make videos shot at 60 frames per second look brighter. Okay, this next one is gonna be instrumental to your camera game when it comes to shooting in different scenarios and you'll see why. Go to the camera app. This time go to photos, 
go to your settings in the top left corner, and here you'll see the new option, advanced intelligence options, and you'll see that you have three options to choose from. If you want the optimal quality and there aren't too many moving parts in front of your camera, you'll get the best results with maximum. However, if you're shooting fleeting moments such as sports or motorsports, you can speed up the shutter speed by setting it to minimum. Yes, you will sacrifice photo of. Then there's the all-rounder, the medium setting, ideal for changing scenarios. Photos will be captured faster using this setting, and it does this by using less image processing than the maximum setting. So use these wisely and according to the scenario and surroundings you find yourself in. Okay, now it's time for a security upgrade. Swipe down from the top, go to your settings, scroll down to security and privacy. If you don't see all green ticks here, then you need to look at that but that's not what I wanna show you. Scroll down and you'll see this new feature called Auto Blocker. This will be switched off by default, but you should know this upgrade is very important because not only will it keep an eye on apps installing malicious software without you knowing, but it also brings a new and increasingly more important safety feature to the table. The ability to detect malicious software that might be installed on a USB cable or a charging device. And trust me, this threat is real. Some of these viruses are so advanced that they'll go undetected on iOS and Android and will self-delete if discovered. So trust me, if you only do one thing that you've learned in this video, this should be it. Okay, if you've been an Android user or a Galaxy user for a long time now, you'll be very familiar with the swipe down and then swipe down again to get all your notifications and then swipe down again to get to your quick panel settings. And when you do this, something you'll notice straight away is that they've upgraded the layout of the quick panel. So you now have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth right at the top and it's pinned there permanently because those are typically the most used quick settings. You'll also notice when you swipe down the first time, you immediately have access to your brightness controls, whereas previously you had to swipe down twice to get to them. And if you feel comfortable now taking things to the next level, you can reduce the amount of swipes needed to get to what you're looking for. So check this out. Expand your full quick controls, hit the little pen up here, go to the quick settings instant axis and enable this. What this does is it enables the top right corner of the screen as a new swipe down area. So you can still swipe down like you used to from the top and again to get to your quick panel, but now you can do it more quickly by swiping down from the top right corner in just a single swipe, which means you can save time. And as you know, nobody can give you your time back. Now this one is a valuable new tool that Samsung have added to their internet app. If you don't already have it pre-installed on your phone, you can download it very quickly by going to the Samsung store, searching for Samsung internet browser and installing it from here. Now let's say your favorite podcast or music playlist is available on YouTube, but you don't have YouTube premium. So every time you navigate away from the browser page or from the app, the audio stops. Samsung have now provided the perfect workaround for this problem. Check this out. Go into the Samsung internet app, hit the three lines in the bottom right corner, go to your settings, scroll down until you see this useful features. And here you'll find a new feature called background play. With this enabled, anything you play via the Samsung internet browser can continue to play even when you navigate away that can be listened to even when your phone is closed. And the great thing about this, if you want to stop the audio or skip to another track, you can control it from the media player in your quick panel controls. And you'll also notice another little upgrade here to One UI 6. The artwork from the video that I'm watching is shown behind the media control now. And this applies to anything that you might be watching or listening to via the browser. And you can even shortcut straight back into the video content just by tapping on the media player. This next one is a productivity power tool, and I think you'll thank me for this one later. The first step is to ensure that you have Smart Select as one of your edge panels. Just to check whether you've already got this set up, swipe out the handlebar from the side here, hit the little settings icon, bottom left corner, and here, make sure Smart Select is ticked. If it's unticked right now, tick it, and it will be the second 
panel across. So now when you swipe the edge panel out and swipe it again, you'll have quick select. And it's really pin and insert that we're gonna focus on because this has been upgraded by Samsung. Let's say there's some important information that you need to keep top of mind while working on something else. You can use the Smart Select to select a part of the screen you want to capture and pin to your home screen. And when it comes to actually selecting the area of the screen, when you drag the corners, there's a little magnifying glass that lets you know exactly where that corner starts so you can be more precise with your selection. Once you've pinned the information that you need to your home screen, here's the new feature. You can actually grab text from that image as and when is needed. And if you didn't know, you can actually minimize the pinned information just by hitting this icon. And something else that's great about this feature, if you wanna keep this information more permanently, you do have the little download icon here. This will grab it and save it to the gallery. Okay, if device storage becomes a concern for you or you're often losing important files within your file system on your phone, there's some new tools in One UI 6 that will help you. First, you need to navigate to your My Files and it's not the Google Files application that I'm talking about, it's the Samsung version of it and it looks like this. Now, once you've opened the Samsung My Files app and you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see Manage Storage. This has been upgraded by Samsung. You'll notice straight away recommendations for clearing space on the device. So definitely keep an eye on this if you need more storage. But let's say, for example, you have a file that you want to keep safe and separate from everything else. You can now use the two finger technique to relocate it. So let me show you how this is done. Go into your internal file storage, find the file that you want to move somewhere else. Hold your finger down on it. And now with your other hand or another finger, you can actually still navigate the My Files app and move this into another folder. And the great thing about this technique is it doesn't just work here within the Samsung My Files. You can actually drag images into other apps. For example, if I hold my finger down on this again, it pops out. I'm gonna to go to Google Keep Notes and I'm gonna drop it here. And there we go. And this same technique also works for apps on the home screen. So if you want to move an app from one screen to another, you can hold your finger down on it and you can navigate with your other hand through the home screens. And that's the new two finger technique. All right, so thanks for making this far into the video, all the way to number 10. And of course, I've saved some fire tips for you guys. Isn't it annoying when someone calls you when you're in a crowded space and you really don't wanna broadcast your conversation to everyone around you? Well, there's a solution for this now. Check this out. Open your phone app, hit the three dots, go to settings. Here you'll find Bixby text call. With this enabled, you can get Bixby to answer phone calls for you and it will auto caption whatever the other person says. And yes, this has been available before, but what's new and improved now is the ability to switch between voice call and Bixby text on the fly whenever you want. And something else that's great about Bixby text calls is you can technically keep a record of a conversation and recall it at a later date via the phone app. And this little icon here just above the time shows that there is text available. Hit the little speech bubble. There's all the conversation mapped out for you in black and white or blue and green in this case. And if you're wondering how I've customized all this stuff, I do have a dedicated video about that, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so here's a quick tip for you guys. Let's say you've got data on your phone, your friend doesn't, and they ask if you can hotspot to them so that they can use the internet. Well, you can share your hotspot password, but then this means that they will have access to your hotspot whenever they want if you leave it on. Here's a fantastic solution to that problem. Scroll down, go to your settings, go to connections, mobile hotspot and tethering, enable your mobile hotspot, tap on it, and at the bottom of this page, you'll see one-time password. Now with this enabled, you can share a QR code which they can scan and it will log on to your back on again, it regenerates a new password every single time. This is a far better way of sharing your mobile data with people who don't necessarily need to have your password all the time. So here's a question for you. Do you use Samsung's modes and routines? And if you don't, don't worry. And if you're already using them, you're gonna like this one. So now when you set up a routine, you can actually have a custom wallpaper 
for that routine. And actually the setup guide now is way more easy to follow than it was before. And it will take you through step by step all of the options available to you and even give you suggestions of what it thinks you might like for that routine. To set up a wallpaper for that mode or routine, all you need to do is scroll to the bottom, go to change appearance, choose a wallpaper, and the rest is pretty much straightforward. And in this process, you will discover that Samsung are giving you a bit more freedom now with the clock. You can actually resize and reposition the clock with way more freedom than before. And you can pretty much drop it anywhere you want within that third of the screen. And you'll notice when the screen locks and you wake it again, the routine or mode is showing here. If you tap it, you can then quickly jump into your modes and select another one or switch it off entirely. And this is just a really great way to have different looks on your phone, as well as auto launching apps. You can even choose custom keyboards to use within modes and routines, different brightness levels, different sound levels. You can get really advanced with it. And there are tons more upgrades that I didn't have time for in this video. So if you want a follow up video, just let me know in the comments below. And if enough people ask for it, I will make it for you guys. And if you want to dive deeper into mastering your Samsung Galaxy, my good luck customization guide is on screen right now and if you don't know what good luck is i think you're going to find it very interesting anyway i appreciate you guys for watching this one if you got any value out of it at all little thumbs up subscribe would make my day and if you just done that i will see you in the next one don't be late the rest is quite simple really